I've been very fortunate in getting the patches because they know I, there wasn't many making quilts around and they knew I made quilts so everybody saved their patches for me. And when the girls were making their sewing, it's the sewing class at school, all the pieces that was left, the scraps, was just thrown out. And I had one granddaughter that said, do you want them? And I said, well, if they're any good. So she saved quite a bag of them and brought them to me of all kinds, you see. Oh, any, any pieces you've got, it all works in, any scraps. The more colors you have, the more color for your quilt is. You, some people do it with the machine, but I, I don't like the machine. A homemade quilt, a good homemade quilt, will outwear a blanket twice. But Aunt Alice has got a quilt over there that I made the winter I was coming 16 years old in the spring. I guess I was ambitious in those days. I buy lightweight on bleach cotton, a yard wide, and tear it down the center, make strips 18 inches wide and 7 feet long. I don't work with squares, I work with the strip. If you use squares, you have too many seams in the foundation when you sew your quilt together. Well, that's for the foundation to sew the pieces on. You can't keep it square unless you have a foundation, you see, something to tack it onto. Silk pieces fray easily, so you have to turn the edges in to base before you baste it down. With thicker material, you don't turn it under. You just baste it down flat. If you turn it under, it would make too thick and bulky a seam. You don't cut the pieces to fit. You just put the pieces on the foundation and let them overlap a little, unless it's too big, and then you may have to cut it. But you don't cut them to fit. You just cut it smaller and work the patches in. You might have to separate your materials, keep the print patches together, the silk and satin will go together, and the wool pieces. You can work a bit of polyester in with the wool, but you can't sew silk and cotton or silk and wool, because when you wash the quilt, it wouldn't, it wouldn't wash the same and it would be a mess. I have washed my quilts many times and they turn out perfect. I've washed them in nice, mild, soapy water, and I like to dry them in a, on the line on a nice, breezy day. You can dry them in a dryer, but it has to have the low heat on it. When the pieces are basted on the foundation, you go around each piece and just hem it down firm. Any pieces that are overlapping the foundation, you trim it off, you see, and have them straight edges. the herringbone stitch on the silk quilts. I do because it makes them look nicer. And on the wool quilts, though, you have to have a stitch to hold them from fraying.
lace the strips together when I'm ready to sew them with just a basting stitch and then I sew them down with a running stitch or you can sew them on the machine if you hold it firm and, and straight. flannelette to back the quilt when I'm ready because it's warm and cozy and it holds it on the bed it won't slip off the way smooth or silky material will slip off the lining is stitched on the frame down each side and stitched across the end and then you spread the bat on it tight and smooth and put the top on that. I generally use a cotton or polyester bat. I like polyester best. You can use wool, but it makes it very thick and hard to quilt, though it makes a beautiful comforter if you tie it. The top is pinned down on the, on the lining and the bat. And it's a slow job for one to do alone. It's much easier if there's two at it working across from each other. It's almost impossible for one person to keep it square doing it themselves because you have to keep going around and loosening up one side and then straightening it up again. I generally use the fan-shaped pattern for quilting. Of course, you can make any kind of pattern, squares or diamond shape or any fancy pattern you like. Or you can buy them if you can find a store that has tracing patterns for you to mark from. But I'm no artist. I can't make up fancy patterns, so I just use the fan pattern. You can do these quilts on the floor, quilting, some folks do, but it's much nicer if you have the quilting frames. You can have lots of people have them made two by twos and a clamped screw in the corners to hold it square, but then you have to rest it on the back of chairs or a table or something so that you can get quilting at it. Well, it's just a straight running stitch when you quilt. Just once in a while, when you take a whether you take three or four stitches on your needle when you draw it through sometimes if you think it's a bit long you take it back a little bit like a back stitch and go but ordinary you just run right along and you keep the lines as even as you can of course whatever whether it's diamonds you're quilting in or circles or what you loosen the ends a bit and roll it under until you come to the line of your last stitching and then you mark it again and start over. Working on both sides of the frame, it takes four rolls to finish it. You work first one side and then the other. Of course, if there's two quilting, one works one side and one works the other. This last year I've made a quilt a month. I think that's going some, a quilt a month. For 87. But then I like hand sewing, you see. Of course, lately I can't see, you see, to do it neatly like I used to. I, when I'm quilting and I bring the needle up and I go to take the next stitch, I can't see where the thread came through, you see. And I'm either either just above that row or a little bit below it, so it's lovely jig-jag. Most people just 
hem the end or turn the two edges together and sew them. But I like to put a binding on it and I think it gives a more finished look to the quilt. You do just a running stitch to, to sew the binding on and then you turn it over and hem it down. Turn the edge in and hem it down like a proper binding. I often wish I'd had a picture of us, my brother and I. I must have been 10 years old and he was 11, cleaning a couple of chickens for our Sunday dinner. And mother and father were called away. I don't know if it was a funeral or a wedding or something. So she said to me, we'll have to put it off until Monday, this chicken dinner. So after they left, I said to my brother, we can, we can clean those chickens. Not me. And I said, sure. You cut the heads off and I'll scald them and I'll clean the chickens. Well, he, he said, you hold their head and I'll hold them by the feet and hold them over the chopping block. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but I caught the thing's head and shut my eyes and down cut the axe. Applicated quilts are pieces that are all cut and you put them on the backing too and you can make there's quite a story with an applicated quilt. It can be Red Riding Hood, the Three Little Pigs or the Gingerbread House or any, any story that you want to make of the applicated pieces. Quilt making's coming back, you know. Everybody's starting to make quilts now. If I'm going to do something, I want the best work I can put on it, even if it's only patches. I guess being so hard up when we were youngsters has its advantages because you learn to do a lot of things and do without a lot of things. But if, the, if you had everything, you would never learn to do them. I made the pattern for the Dresden plate quilt, just cut it out of a piece of cardboard and cut the pieces all out from that pattern. But you know, a uh, handmade quilt, uh, it doesn't pay to make them really now, only the people that really like them. Because at the fair this year, they had quilts that were all machine made, and they were polyester bat in them, and a lining, and they were selling them for 10 and $5. Now, I don't know the exact size of them. They said, oh, they were the size of a double bed. But if you can buy a quilt like that for ten dollars, who'd bother making them? Only some old woman that has nothing else to do, I guess.